Sixth grade, module two, lesson 15, classwork. Opening exercise, use mental math to evaluate the numeric expressions. 99 plus 44. So here they don't want us to actually use a standard algorithm and add them together. It wants us to use mental math. So first thing I notice is 99 is really close to 100. So I'm gonna make that 100. Now since I added one there, I need to take one away from 44. So I'm going to make it 100 plus 43, and I get 143. So 99 plus 44 would be 143. Now there's other ways that you could have do, done it. This is kind of like estimating where there's not one right or wrong way to do it. So 86 minus 39. I notice 39 is really close to 40. So I'm going to make this 40. And then since I'm subtracting, I need to give one more to 86 and make that 87. So 87 minus 40 would be 47, which is a much simpler problem to solve because 40 ends in a 0 as opposed to subtracting 39. Okay, C, 50 times 14. So 50 times 14 seems a little bit challenging, but I can make 50 if I multiply that by 2 into 100. And then since I doubled that, what I need to do is to divide 14 by 2, take half of that, and make it 7. So I'd have 100 times 7 is the same thing as 50 times 14. And 100 times 7 is... 700, so 50 times 14 is also 700. 180 divided by 5. So I can't just do 18 divided by 5. That doesn't come out to a whole number. But something that I can always easily divide by is 10. So I'm going to turn 5 into 10 by multiplying by 2. So then I need to do the same thing to 180. 180, 18 times 2 is 36. So 180 times 2 would be 360. And 360 divided by 10 is 36. So 180 divided by 5 would also be 36. Exercises 1 through 4. Use mental math techniques to evaluate the expressions. Okay, 770 divided by 14. I'm going to put it in fraction form. Okay, so I'm just going to start by looking at what I can divide both of them by. I can divide both of them by, let's see, 14. The factors are 2, 1, 7, and 14. So I'm going to divide by 7 because I can divide both of them by 7. 770 divided by 7 would be 110. And 14 divided by 7 is 2. And 110 divided by 2 is 55. 1,005 divided by 5. So again, this reminds me of one of the examples a little bit earlier. I can turn 5 into 10. So I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. Make this 10, which would make this 10,050. Oops, sorry, we're multiplying by 2, not by 10. We'll do that in a second. So 1,005 times 2 would be 2,010. Now, if I do 2,010 divided by 10, I think those cancel out, and we get 201. Number 3, 1,500 divided by 8. Okay, so... Nothing is jumping out to me that I could easily do, so I'm just going to divide them both by 2, because I can do that. They're both even numbers. So 1,500 divided by 2 is 750. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, I can divide by 2 again. So 750 divided by 2. Well, 700 divided by 2 will be 350. 50 divided by 2 would be 25, so 350 plus 25 is 375. 
4 divided by 2 is 2. And so now I just need to divide that in half. So 375 divided by 2. 300 divided by 2 is... I'll write this down, what I'm thinking. 300 divided by 2 is 150. So then we just have 75 left. So let's do 50 divided by 2 is 25. So then we have 25 divided by 2 is 12 and a half. So if I add all of that up, I get 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 1 is 8, 187 and 5 tenths, or and a half. Number four, 1,260 divided by five. So I'm going to make five into 10, which means I need to multiply them both by two. 1,260 times two would be 2,000, and then 260 times two. Well, 200 times two is 400, and 60 times two is 120. So that's 520, 2,520. And if I divide by 10, I get 252. Example 2. Evaluate the expression 175 divided by 3 and 5 tenths using mental math techniques. Okay, so now they're throwing some more decimals at us. So 175 divided by 3 and 5 tenths. I, my goal here, I want to get 3 and 5 tenths into a whole number. And I can do that by multiplying by 2. Because if I multiply by 2, that makes that 7. And 175 times 2, well, 100 times 2 is 200. 75 times 2 is 150. So that is 350. And we can do 350 divided by 7. So 35 divided by 7 is 5 with this extra zero gives us 50. So our quotient would be 50. Exercises five through seven, use mental math techniques to evaluate the expressions. 25 divided by six and 25 hundredths. So again, I'm gonna try and make this six and 25 hundredths into a whole number. So 25 hundredths, I know that's like 25 cents a quarter. And if I have four of them, that gives me a whole. So I'm gonna multiply by four. So 6 times 4 is 24, and 25 hundredths, or 25 cents, times 4 is 1. So together, that is 25, and 25 times 4 is 100. So 100 divided by 25 is equal to 4. 6 and 3 tenths divided by 1 and 5 tenths. I'm going to make... Let's see, let's make the 1 and 5 tenths into a whole number. We can do that by multiplying by 2, because 1 and 5 tenths times 2 is 3. 6 and 3 tenths times 2, well 6 times 2 is 12, and 3 tenths times 2 is 6 tenths. So 12 and 6 tenths divided by 3. So I can split this up. Let's do 12 divided by 3 gets me 4. And then 6 tenths divided by 3 would get me 2 tenths. So if I add those together, I get 4 and 2 tenths. Four hundred twenty-five divided by 2 and 5 tenths. Okay, so I can multiply by 2 because that will get me to 5 a whole number, 425 times 2, 400 times 2 is 800, 25 times 2 is 50, so 850 divided by 5, we just need to do 85 divided by 5, you can count up, I know that 100 divided by 5 is 20, so 15 less than that would be 3 groups of 5, so 20, did you follow that? So 100 divided by 5 is 20. So if I wanted to know what 85 divided by 5 is, the difference between that is 15, which would be three groups of 5. So I can subtract three groups of 5, and I'll know that this is going to be 17. So 
So 85 divided by 5 is 17, with one extra zero gives us 170. Example 3. Evaluate the expression 4,564 divided by 3 and 5 tenths using mental math techniques and the division algorithm. Okay, so they're giving us bigger numbers, which means we might not be able to do everything in our head. 4,564 divided by 3 and 5 tenths. So I'm going to use some mental math to get it to some easier numbers to work with, and then we're going to divide. So 3 and 5 tenths, I can multiply by 2, and that will get me 7. So if I multiply that by 2, let's see, I'm going to need to break that down a little. So 4,000 times 2 is 8,000. 500 times 2 would get us 1,000. Then we have 64 times 2. Well, 60 times 2 is 120. 4 times 2 is 8, so 128. If I add all that up, 9,128. So we have 9,128 divided by 7. I can't do that in my head, so I'm going to use the division algorithm. 7 goes into 9 once, 1 times 7 is 7, bring down the 1. 7 goes into 21 3 times, bring down the 2. 7 goes into 2 0 times, bring down the 8. 7 goes into 28 4 times, no remainder, so our answer is 1,304. Example 4. Shelley was given this number sentence and was asked to place the decimal point correctly in the quotient. 55 and 6,875 ten thousandths divided by 6 and 75 hundredths equals 825 thousandths. Do you agree with Shelley? Okay, well let's estimate. So I see 55 divided by 6. I can't do 55 divided by 6, but... I could round, I can do 54 divided by 6. That's one of my math, uh, math problems. So 54 divided by 6 is 9. But she got 825 thousandths, which is less than 1. So I'm going to say that I don't agree with Shelly because, so I'm going to say no. When I round in, I got 54 divided by 6 is equal to 9. 9 is not very close to 825 thousandths. I think, so I think the decimal point should be over here. It should be more like 8 and 25 hundredths. I think the decimal should be placed after the 8. Divide to prove your answer is correct. All right. Six eight seven five divided by six and seventy five hundredths. Okay, so let's start by making the divisor a whole number divisor, like we were doing in the previous lesson. So that's two powers of ten or one hundred. Six hundred seventy five. That would turn into five thousand five hundred sixty eight and seventy five hundredths. So now we can divide. Bring this decimal point straight up. So we need to see it. Five, 675 can't go into 5, it can't go into 55, and it can't go into 556. 
So how many times could it go into 600 or 5,568? Well, it's a pretty big number, 5,568. 675 times 10 would be 6,750. So probably eight or nine times. I'm going to go with eight because we think that the decimal should be placed after the eight. So I'm going to use that as a hint. Eight times five is 40, carry the four. Eight times seven is 56, plus four is 60. Eight times six is 48, plus six would be 54. So 5,400. If I added another 675, it'd be too big, so. We get 168 left, bring down the seven. How many times could 675 go into 1,687? Probably two or three times. Let's, let's see, six times, 600 times three would be 1,800, which would be too big. So a little bit more would be even bigger. So it can probably only go in twice. Times two. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, carry the 1. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13. 1,350. We subtract to get 337, bring down the 5. So how many times do we think 675 can go into 3,375? I'm going to guess about four or five times. So four times I can just add that together because this was two times. We get 2,700. Let's see if we can add another 675. This would be five times. Yep. Exactly, 3,375. So it can go in five times. No remainder, so we get eight and 25 hundredths, which was correct. That's what our estimate should have been, and she put the decimal point in the wrong place.